Market observations for Eurobedella in southern New South Wales. So this is the Batemans Bay area uh, more specifically and obviously the surrounding locations from it. This is an area that was, I guess benefited strongly throughout the post-COVID years. You've got people moving to the tree change, sea change locations. Uh, you've generally got a lot of holiday makers, holiday homes, uh, and you've got a few pockets of low socio, as you'll find out today. So in this video, discover which locations, uh, or oh, the general state of the market, what direction is potentially the rent and the buy side of this market looking like it's going to go towards, and then let's dive down into the individual suburbs, streets, and types of properties that we might target there for success, um, if it is an area worthy of our attention. So let's dive right in. I want to say at a high level, property investment isn't a science. I'm very consistent about this in all of our videos. We are a data research, research house. Our algorithm has been extremely accurate in predicting high performance capital growth since it was released. We really were a pioneer of this uh, you know, AI or data backed investment in Australia. Since 2015, it was the first time we were covered on the cover story of Money Magazine in that year. The algorithm has grown from strength to strength and has been very good throughout the last 12 months uh, as interest rates have been rising in picking the gold, picking those you know strong high performance locations out of the dust that's been left by these high interest rate environments. Um, so we need to take a scientific approach to this, guys. This is a framework we're going to be using to do our analysis today. And it is a market observations of this area. It has been put forward and suggested to us by the members, the users over at the High Performance Property Investment Facebook group. Okay, there's a, a really nice dynamic, dynamic environment of 5,000 focused property investors, and this was the area that was voted number one that they would like to, for us to take this deep dive in. In doing this process, in doing you know business as usual within Ripe House Advisory, we do our research, we're ranking uh, each suburb across the country at any one time, we'll then do a personal check of each location, providing a common sense check, and then defining the overall opportunity. At any one time, there's only around 200 or so suburbs across the country that meet all those ticks of the box. This video is going to be going through that process and determining at a high level, would this area qualify? Number one, the overall market opportunity. Think about this as the where. When you stack all of these locations across the country together in order, it's the top tier of locations we want to be focusing our attention on. At this point, over the you know, short to midterm, three to five years, what is the scope, the quantum of opportunity in this local government area uh, compared to other areas across the country. We only want to be focusing on the best opportunities. I've said that word a lot of times. Um, that's the where. This is the big picture. From there, if the opportunity is worthy of our attention, we've got to determine, is it the right time to buy there? The when? Are we in the optimum buying window for an acquisition in this location? At a high level, this local government area is categorized in the top 79% of all locations. Why? Because it has great natural and local amenities. You can see the greater local government area, uh, area here. You've got the Bate, Batemans Bay area. We do have a local airport. It's, I mean, it's, 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 it's a very small airport in the local area just to the south. We have hospitals. We have shopping centers. And we have lovely, amazing natural amenities, both water ocean and inland parks, recreation, lifestyle factors, a lot of acreages, etc., all around this area. And you're within weekend driving distance, uh, staying a night or two from Sydney. So escaping the, the rat race, the, the big city. A lot going for it, great weather, great climate. Uh, you know, it is a, a real focal point of people making that lifestyle tree change, sea change in the last few years. COVID has really ramped this up. Um, go back and watch one of our videos we filmed with Bernard Sold, a key demo demographer across Australia, and uh, he, he made note of, uh, you know, people demanding larger block sizes, de demanding that lower density. This is where the Batemans Bays of the world really do uh, gain a lot to benefit from post-COVID era. 
I like to look at employment diversity. It's one thing to have tight employment, which we'll have a look at in a moment. It's another to make sure that we're not having all of our eggs in one basket. I was talking to our private mastermind group this morning in detail about Gladstone. Gladstone's probably the one city, the one market across Australia which has been impacted by a lack of employment diversity, uh, more so than any other. And that was around changes of the fly-in, fly-out policies of mining companies going back around a decade or so that completely pulled the rug out of the Gladstone market. It still has just now recovered to a point that it is worthy of our attention. We want to see nice, diverse employment, and I love to see the big ticket, the highest employer in the area, as healthcare and social assistance. Why? because it means that state level government have invested strongly in health services, hospitals, health centers, etc. in the area. It generally means that they have identified this as a local hub. You know, other areas within even 100 or so kilometers focusing on this location for their health services. Retail and trade accommodation, education and training. I love to see this. Uh, having all of these here leads us to, you know, this would be a diverse employment landscape. If it was really one or two that were overtaking and the rest of them are falling into the other category, uh, you know, it wouldn't be as diverse. But we've got here at almost 15%, 15%, 12%, what about 10% here, 10%, 10%. I mean, we've got 70% um, of employment spread across six different uh, types of industries, types of employer. That is outstanding economic diversity on a national level. So a big tick here for us around economic diversity. It's not good if it's diverse now, but then all the new projects coming on in the next few years are focused in one particular area. This is the list of new big ticket items coming up in the area. We have a military operation, okay? $700 million being spent on the expansion of the John Baker complex, General John Baker complex. We love defense spending with this type of defense spending because it is localized to the area. You've got more heads in the area. You've got all the supporting industries around it. You have the state government providing upgrades to bypasses, transport hubs, uh, $400 million suspending is substantial. And then once again, a Batemans Bay Bridge replacement. This is a big ticket item, it's big dollar spending, but what type of improvements does it cause uh, for the future? Construction creates more jobs, ongoing employment, negligible, uh, you know, but it does sometimes lead to increased or improved utility, you know, willingness to spend on the area if there are these public improvements for locals or potential new residents coming to the area. So, uh, look, big ticket item, but this is worth 10 of these, you know, is a, a high level statement. This $700 million is worth far more than this $700 million to the employment, the backbone, the, the, the pressure on property prices in the local area. Love to see $300 million spent on health. Very big ticket item. Once again, more transport. Um, then we have some industrial improvements and then regional improvements. Look, these big ticket items really is, are punching above its weight in terms of this area compared to others. And it's quite diverse. It's a type of spending that's not going to lead to that clustering of employment in the future. So that is de-risked. We've also got to look at where new supply. Remember that overall formula that I showed before? Property investing is a science. Uh, we have all these wonderful creators of demand employment, you know, population, lifestyle factors, um, new projects in the pipeline, but we also need to take away from that. It's a balance, the supply in the pipeline, and that is low and a nation, very good. Um, you know, I would say under 2% two, two is, is good, is, is, but it's still high from a national perspective, but anything under 2 and I'm very comfortable with for this regional type location. But even understanding in and around Batesman's Bay, we don't really have any suburbs that are, you know, to be alarmed about, but inlands. Some of these regional pockets um, have over 10% new houses in the supply pipeline. So this is a consistent story across the country. All of these areas that are fronting the ocean, even in regional places like this, generally have low supply in the pipeline, but inland, it might only be three or five Ks. You might have new housing releases, etc. You've got to be careful when you come into these types of locations for any of this type of supply risk. Okay, obviously, 
Ripe House Advisory, we are a private advisory service, uh, research and acquisition service for investment properties across the country. So if you wanted more information about well, the types of research that we do, any locations you might be looking at, any strategy considerations, or what you might want to do as your next best chess move, there is a link in the description below to how to reach out to a member of my team for us to be able to develop a 20-year wealth plan for you. And I'm happy going into 2023 uh, to put those together along with my team, we spent about four or five hours in brainstorming those before we would present them at no cost because we need clarity. We need to make sure our next move takes us towards our goals and doesn't back us into a corner where the banks don't like us very much and we're not able to continue buying. We want our next purchase to facilitate purchases after that. And that's why Clarity, a wealth plan, it provides us with that roadmap. And that's why I'm, I'm opening those up to you, our viewers, You've obviously demonstrated to us that you are interested and very passionate about successful property investing. Well, that's what we do every day. Have a chat to our team and get one of the, the wealth plans. I think that would be a great next step. Back to this information here. Population growth. Uh, look, it did slow. It's not high overall. Um, you know, it might be a factor of people moving out whilst all the tree you see changes moving in. But we have to remember this is pre-COVID data. Um, this particular chart has not ingested the 2022 data from ABS yet. Um, we have seen this increase through the COVID period. We just haven't updated the chart here with the research. Um, expect in 2021, 2022, this has now jumped up quite substantially. Before that, before COVID, this was actually a, a bit of a backwater. It was actually an area where no huge amount of people were moving towards. And that's the type of the reconnaissance, the real change in perception, the change in the migration or people moving to an area and their incomes, their employment. They might be living and working here uh, or living there permanently and only and working from a home office and only going up to Sydney one or two days a week. That's what we're starting to see in these locations. That has created a dramatic shift in who is living and moving to these areas and it has resulted in post-COVID population data looking very different to pre-COVID. And now once again, look at the, 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 the timeline here. This is 12 months out of date. We are, uh, ABS, uh, we, we need to ingest and ABS need to release and, and then we need to ingest the 2022 data as of year close. Okay, we want to get that full year snapshot. But unemployment going into COVID was around that 8%. We've seen a 3% drop off nationally from uh, in unemployment rates in the last two years post COVID. So expect that to have tightened up a lot uh, to be confirmed and checked, but expected it to have tightened up a lot in the last two years. So overall, we are in an area that is showing very strong signs, a very good opportunity or market opportunity nationally. Think of it in terms of we'll stack all the local government areas in order. This is better than 79% of them. So it is in that top echelon of local government areas. You can definitely do a lot better. Uh, you know, in private advisory, Ripe House advisory, we are really focusing on that top tier, that top percentage, that 1% of local government areas, not top, you know, 21%. But if you are a force to buy here or potentially, you know, you have a local area edge or knowledge, then this might be worthy of your attention. Uh, assuming that you were going down the path of buying, let's determine now, is it the right time to buy here? So we can do a lot worse. We are in the top 21 percentile of all local government areas across the country. It's ticking a lot of boxes. If you are really backing that sea change, tree change horse down the, the, the track, then this is an excellent location nationwide. And being so close into ocean, you've got that scarcity driver that's going to be there forever. You know, a very strong scarcity driver across Australia's eastern seaboard. Days on market. We can see here the houses is the line that I like to look at. It did start trending upwards going into Christmas, but it has come back off again going into January. It still is extremely low, even all the way through this chart. 20 to 40 is the range. 40 days on market is still very low nationally, so a tight market. The number of immediate sales heading into Christmas was very high. That's showing there's a lot of heat in this market. That means that one in five properties, 20%, of properties are selling within seven days of listing. It's a very heated market. So we might be seeing a market top here in the short term. The level of property. So there's a lot of properties sitting here on the market and a lot of them are selling very quickly. We have high and increasing stock inventory. Days of supply is increasing. 
So this is showing to us that the, the backlog of properties, properties are now starting to sell, uh, the, the inventory is very high, the number of properties being listed is very high, and days on market is stable. So the actual days of supply is increasing. This would indicate, and this is a leading indicator, a very strong leading indicator here in Ripe House Advisory, uh, the, 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 the direction, the steam, the power behind the forward momentum of prices in this area is starting to dissipate. And this trumps all the other metrics. We've got high in number of immediate sales, lots of pressure going into Christmas, but that's on the back of lots of properties coming up for sale. So days of supply is easing. For me, the momentum is really left leaving this market. We might be at a, a very strong market peak right now. Asking price, it has fluctuated dramatically and it has come off the boil. So now we are having the steam evaporate from the market which where vendors have really readjusted their asking price expectations over the last 12 months. The heat and the price has come out of this market. Vendor discounting is now firmly in the negative period or ne negative area for houses here around 2%. So that is once again confirmation. Vendors expectations is dissipating through a, a, a listing period. Whilst the property is on the market, the vendors expectations are softening. So that's going to tell you a bit of an idea about the market. Now this all the lag, lag, you know, lead and lag factors, this is all combinating in a market which has come off the boil substantially. You've seen asking prices drop by almost $100,000 or around $100,000. Well, you've also seen it here in prices as well. And we know with days of supply, this is going to continue to get worse before it gets better. So for me, this is not the time to be entering this market. It's as clear as day. You know, right back here, 2020, this was the time to be entering the market. This is not a short-term correction. It's looking like the heat is well and truly left. Now, how short is this corrective period? The rental side of a market gives us a lot of hints here. So, days on rental market, extremely tight, quite volatile heading into Christmas, but it's still very tight. So properties are selling, are renting very quickly. Vacancy rates are still low, but they are heading in the wrong direction, right? So this is showing you that there is still tightness here in the rental market, but the pressure is easing. And rental yields are on their way up, okay? So with, with this tightness, you know, the pressure might be easing somewhat from the rental side of the market, but people are still paying more to rent, or are they? Ask yourself the question, jump in the comments. Yields are going up, but prices are dropping. So that might mean that rents are even still going backwards, but just not as fast as property prices. So sometimes you've got to dig into this a little bit deeper. I don't have a rent per week chart on here, but yields are going up somewhat, but it's not really a factor uh, of rents increasing, which is a nice bullish sign. It is a factor of property prices decreasing. And even if re re rate, uh, rents are stable uh, and property prices are decreasing, you're gonna get yields going up. That's not a positive environment. We want rents increasing, yields increasing, lots of rental scarcity, uh, and that's the reason why yields are increasing, right? That's the type of environment that we enter. So we're not seeing that heat here. This is a false signal. We're not seeing the strength, the backbone of the rental market that I would like to see to indicate to me this is a short-term correction. For me, I think there's a lot of stars that need to align in this market over the next two to three years before we're going to see another upswing. Gun to your head, had to buy in the area. We have to remember that analysis that we've just done is a local government area, a top level analysis of the overall area. There are many suburbs that do constitute, 59 suburbs that do constitute the wider local government area. And this is ranked in order of their capital growth potential. Are they in the buying window right now? So some of them might actually be six or 12 months previous or even two years previous to the overall local government area. There still might be some hope I did dive in here to Catalina. I did get attracted to it because the price point is quite affordable compared to the overall local government area. And the yield is as good as it really gets here at 4.1%. I did dive into Catalina. That might be worthy of our attention at a suburb level, but you need to remember 
that not all streets are created equal. In Catalina, there is one street cluster that has almost one in five homes leased as public housing. Now, I've been, uh, you know, we, we had a very, um, I guess, polarizing comments or thread on the, on the High Performance Property Investment Group recently about public housing. A lot of people up in arms going, this is disgusting. Public housing shouldn't be something that is, I guess, track like this for property investors. Guess what? Property investment is a business. I am looking at this type of data to determine my next investment property. I am not judging the, the you know, policy considerations of having social housing. I'm not judging people who rent social housing. I am taking data and using that to my advantage one way or another to buy my next investment property. And the facts are, we have proven this many years ago at Ripe House Advisory, uh, at a street level, the number one factor which amplifies positively or negatively, your growth returns at a street level is public housing. If you have 0% public housing in that street area, expect over 20% higher alone, capital growth, compared to the suburb overall. If you have over 15% public housing in that street location, it's the opposite, over 20% less capital growth compared to the suburb overall. It's a dramatic impact. So these areas might be neighboring a higher socio neighboring suburb and this middle cluster is a real handbrake you've got to avoid it at all costs as an investor what happens if this is where everyone wants to get to well all these people are walking past here to get to these things on a daily basis and that can really drag down not just these streets in terms of street appeal but also the ones closer to the key drivers of utility shopping centers beaches transport hubs all of these things you've got to think about this logically guys this is the type of due diligence, depth of knowledge, um, research that we have to go into. LGA, suburb, street and property to, to find high performance property investments consistently. When we get here, we need to act like a local would. We need to know the streets backwards. We need to be able to have those you know, connections, even going there personally to be able to look at these individual streets and properties to be able to find the standout investments. And that's end to end guys, market opportunity for the Batemans Bay, let's just call it the Batesman's Bay, Euro Badala local government area in New South Wales. Good overall opportunity longer term, but it's not the right time to enter this market. There may be some hope at a suburb and a street level, but you've got to really fight against the grain, you're fighting against the tide, um, I would prefer to get myself into local government areas that are right in the buying window right now. And there are many across the country. Uh, have a chat to us here at Ripe House Advisory. Uh, potentially a next step is booking in a, a free no-cost discovery call or even watching our 25-minute explainer video. Uh, all the links to those things are down in the comments and description attached to this video. Love your work. Please like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the bell icon so you're the first to know about any of our future research, uh, private advisory information, case studies, or the current news coverage. Thank you.